She's alive. You must take him with us. There's a doctor at the Ragastein camp. Exhaustion and alcoholism. You see what I mean by the miracle? The resemblance between us? Shave that beard and he'd be your twin. Yes, I go. We were even more like. You know him? We were at Oxford together. His name is Everard Dominey. And you meet here. <laughs> like this. Hmm. Long odds. Hey, Trank. Perhaps my look is changing. Your, your luck? I've been in this whole three years. Three lifetimes. Maybe this is my chance for freedom. Your chance for freedom? Look out! Look out! Hey, now, now, now. You're all right. Uh, how about a drink? You've had too much to drink. <laughs> you underestimate me. Oh, uh, you're right, Doctor. You're right. You are not seeing double. Don't you remember me? Oxford, number five, in our boat. Leopold von Ragestein. Rags. I'll be... What on earth are you doing in Africa? I've been hunting lions. My boys robbed me and ran away. Then the lions started to hunt me. Rags. How many years has it been? Oh, come, come. I... You, you must rest. I... When you wake, we will have a long talk. Ah, uh, and a longer highball. Perhaps. I am awfully glad to have you here. Uh, thanks. Truly, I've never seen two men so alike. Of course, your face is a bit more oval. His lower lip is more prominent. I wish the tradesman at Oxford had been so observant. They used to send me his bills. Why not? You were always charging things to my account. <laughs> Tell me, what do you do in this forsaken country? I represent Sir Ivan Brun, head of the Internationale Munitions. Oh, I see. You supply the natives with pea shooters. We have saltpeter mines nearby. Also, I keep my finger on the pulse of affairs. What? In Africa? When even a little war breaks out. We like to have our salesmen first, in the field, on both sides. <laughs> well, you'll be rather busy in Europe, if these war rumors are true. <sighs> Tell me, don't you ever long for your beloved Vienna? The theaters, music, beautiful women? Constantly. If I were in your shoes, with no business ties, I would leave for England tomorrow. Well, I'll never see England again. From now on, this is my life. And hunting big game in Africa. No more tonight. That constitution of yours has brought you back quickly, and I'll give it a chance. At this rate, you'll be dead in six months. What of it? Think of the fun. Now, now, go along to bed. You doctors reserve all the pleasures for yourselves. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night, Rags. Good night, my friend. The code book, quick. Code book? Yes, hurry. Get our fastest runner. No God. No God. To the telegraph station. Wait for a reply. The Englishman should rest. Hmm? After he has talked to me. Hmm. Very much so. Care to talk for a while? 
I'd like nothing better. I thought so. Sit down. Doctors do not always know what is best. <laughs> Finest medicine in the world. Keeps you from remembering. You have something to forget? <laughs> A woman, I'll wager. I don't discuss my personal affairs. Oh, I am sorry. I do not mean to pry. But it usually is a woman. That is why I am here. In exile. Exile. Have you ever loved a woman deep down inside? Until she filled your heart and your soul? Yes. That's how I felt about Stefani. Her husband challenged me to a duel. I killed him. The Emperor banished me from Austria. Whatever your story, surely it cannot be as miserable and sordid as that. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid it's even worse. So? came out here to Africa. Why do I tell you all these things? I never talk so much to anyone. I hope I have not tired you. I do not know when I have been so interested. It's daylight. I think I will go to bed. Good night. Good night. Where? To England. I am getting out, Frank. No more flies, dirt, heat. No more of this. How can you? Because Sir Ivan Burren says so. You know why I have been slaving for him. He is the most powerful man in the world. His organization is complete in every country, except for a leader in England. I am going there. As Sir Everard Dominic. But you will never carry it through. His friends would know you at once. Nonsense, he has been away. I was educated for the part. That's why I dared cable Sir Ivan. He has been waiting for a chance like this. As Everard Domini, I would move in official circles. Be above suspicion. With my mind and heart, it is perfect. Baron, Baron, consider the consequences. You can't succeed. I must, I will. If I do, Sir Ivan's influence will release me from exile. A civilized life, a fine future. Stefani again. Shh, you hear you. Oh, he's asleep, drunk. And suppose he should return home. Hmm? In two days, we will send the Englishman north with a small safari to hunt rhino. Fill his water bottles with nothing but whiskey. His food bags with one day's rations. Very salty. That's murder. He has no wish to live. You said yourself he would not last six months. Yes, I know. Oh, we have been together so long. You must help me. <laughs> All right, I did. But the boys... Put Ghana in charge. If the Englishman drinks, they will leave him in the heaviest jungle, alone at night. If he does not drink, they will bring him to my camp at the bend of the Blue River. I think it will be better if he drinks. <laughs>
War is just around the corner, my dear seaman. Practically in our midst. If we do not prepare a suitable reception for the uh, gentleman from Mars, it would be very bad manners and uh, deplorable business. To be sure, sir. You will instruct our factories in all countries to go on a three-shift basis. Immediately, sir. In all countries. Mm -hmm. We do not take sides. We take cash. Gold seamen from now on. Quite so, sir. This isn't going to be a localized squabble like yesterday's Balkan affair. No, indeed. Our agents have made sure of that. With scrupulous impartiality, they have kept all the war officers informed as to one another's plans and preparations. Each country will want the advantage of striking first. They will all inevitably strike at the same time, soon. This war will involve all Europe. I'm afraid it will tax our capacity. England overbalances the situation. Too strong. I like a fair fight. <laughs> and a long one. We should do rather well out of it. What a beautiful plan. Baron von Hagenstein, sir. Admit him. But remember, we can't afford a scandal. At all times, our hands must seem to be immaculate. The moment anyone suspects von Hagenstein's true identity, he must be put out of the way. I'll attend to that personally, sir. Baron von Wagenstein. Herr Baron, I congratulate you. I like a man who thinks fast. This is a great plan of yours. <laughs> to kill a man and take his place. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Baron, I envy you. You will have the most perfect reward. The laurels of a national hero and the income of a millionaire. That is, if you succeed. I can't fail. The only man who can contradict my identity is dead. Splendid. You will proceed at once to England and take your place as Sir Everard Dominey. You are no longer an impoverished baronet, Sir Everard. You have made a fortune in African gold mining. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Try again for Parliament, Sir Everard, as your predecessor once did. It is very important. Gives you access to political secret course. Dominey Hall will be our British headquarters. Seaman here is my intermediary. He is to be obeyed implicitly. Right you are, sir. As master of Dominey Hall, you will provide a safe hiding place for our operatives. Our plan is a simple one. Delay. Cripple the effectiveness of England's mighty war machine. The moment to strike is when England decides on war. That moment, you will learn for us. I will do my very best, sir. Yes. I rely completely on your patriotism and your greed. <laughs> This dossier contains photographs and data to guide you. Uh, your relatives and friends, their attitudes towards you, their distinguishing eccentricities, and uh, a complete history of your past life. Not a very pleasant one. Memorize every detail. This is your wife. Sir Everard Dominey's wife. Mm. What a fool he was to leave her. No one likes tragedy. When do you leave for London? At four o'clock. Sir Everard lunches with his solicitor tomorrow. Good. Good luck. I still say, frankly, I would never recognize you, Sir Everard. Particularly when I pay the bill. Thank you. Even your voice seems changed. I'm thinking of going down to Dominey Hall tonight. Isn't that a bit risky? Perhaps, but I'm going. You found it in bad shape. As you know, there's been no money. It's run down and mortgaged to the hilt. Mm, you can notify the bank I'll pay off the mortgages at once. What will? I not only gained health in Africa, I also made money. Thank you. Great Scott. I never heard of a Dominey doing that. I owe Africa a great deal. Look, it's Everard. Impossible. It is. You wicked boy, why didn't you let me know you were home? Well, I just arrived this morning. Well, don't stand there like a totem pole. Be glad to see me. How well you're looking, Everard. And you look younger than ever. How perfectly you lie. Amazing. Henry, must you always be amazed? You remember Henry, don't you? Very well. How are you? In amazing shape. <clears throat> 
This is Eddie Pelham. Welcome home. He can't shake hands. He fell off a horse. Oh, too bad. Come and see me tomorrow. We'll have a go at the fences together. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm leaving for Dominey Hall tonight. Everard, don't go down there and torture yourself. You went through all that before. Why try it again? Well, I feel as though I should. Surely you're not going to take your duty seriously at this late date. Perhaps it's time I did. Well, if you've made up your mind, there's nothing I can do. Look us up as soon as you get back to London. I will. I'm dying to hear all about India. No, no, not India, my dear. Africa. Oh, well, they're all the same. Full of wild beasts and black girls, nothing on but pieces of grass. Goodbye, Herod. <laughs> Come along. <laughs> I say, isn't she? Amazing. Hey? Oh, quite. Your cousin's a charming woman. Very. Shall we go? If you like, I could drive you down to Dominic. Thanks very much. I'll get my hat and stick. Right. I'm sorry. I'm afraid you've made a mistake. In London, of all places. Why didn't you let me know? You have me confused with someone else. Are you denying that you are Leopold von Ragerstein? My name is Everard Dominey. You'd rather not talk here, is that it? I can only repeat you're mistaken. <laughs> are you fool enough to believe that I don't know you? I insist upon talking to you. My room is 412. I'll expect you there in five minutes. Wasn't that the Princess Ida Strong? I don't know the lady. She mistook me for someone else. I'll meet you here about seven, eh? Right. I can't tell you how glad I am you're home again, Swiffer. Come in. Seaman. Congratulations, Sir Everard. You're doing very well. There wasn't a trace of an accident in the lobby. Sit down, Leopold. Mr. Seaman has been very patient. I understand all about your being Sir Edward Dominey, how important it is for you to succeed. But, Leopold, tell him that our seeing each other won't interfere. It's bound to. No, it won't, Leopold. Tell him to go. I'm no child. Surely, after all we've been through together, the duel, the scandal, the heartbreak, you can trust me. It isn't that, Stefani. Anyone who knew us before, seeing us together, would recognize my true identity at once. You do not realize Sir Everett Domini is a married man. But I won't even look at you when we're with other people. We'll be together only when you say. No, Stefani, Simon is right. Until my work is finished, we must stay apart. You can't mean that. I do. You let him make rules about us? But we have been separated so long now. A short time longer will not matter much. But hold me in your arms. Now. No, Stefani. I do not dare. Hello? Yes, speaking. Who? Oh, yes. Leave? When? But I... Very well. You did this. You called my ambassador and had him order me to leave the country. I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to convince you. When you've thought it over, you'll realize that this way is best. Leopold! Sir Everett had a very important engagement. He was quite sure that you would excuse him. Good day, Princess. Careful looking place, isn't it? I told him it was run down, Sir Everett. My architect, Mr. Seaman, will be here tomorrow. He'll see that the place is repaired. A beautiful old place like this is worth restoring. Quite. Well, Middleton, here's your master. Welcome home, Squire. 
Thank you, Vivian. Come in, sir. Good evening, Sir Everett. Good evening. How long have you been here? Surely you remember my daughter, sir. Oh, yes, yes, of course, sir. She's grown much prettier since I went away. <laughs> but you're the same old piece of parchment. Can't say the same for you, sir. You look a new man. So, Artie, not like when you left. This is a happy day for Domini Hall, sir. Thanks, sir. Will you bring in the bags, please? Yes, sir. Have a nightcap. No, thanks. You murderer! Get out of this house! No one wants you here. Go back into hiding where you came from. Mrs. Unthank, be quiet. How dare you come here? This is my home, Mrs. Unthank. If you wish to keep your position, you will learn to respect your master. Respect him for murdering my son, for making a mad woman of his own I'll wife. I'll have no more talk from you. Go to your room. And understand, I expect to come and go here as I like. What bluff! You ran away once. You'll go again. This time, I intend to stay. Oh, no, you won't, Sir Everard. The screams of Roger's ghost will drive you off. I'll risk that. He haunts the black bog where you killed him on your wedding night. Because he loved her and you took her from him, he'll haunt you. He'll haunt you out of this house. Quite a welcome. The woman's insane. No doubt. You can't keep her here. Well, we'll take care of Mrs. Unthank in due time. That did my heart good, sir. She's been needing a sitting on. It's mostly on her account people still believe you murdered Roger Unthank. If that were true, Middleton, why was Roger's body never found? They claim it sank where you threw it, sir, in the black bog. I tried to tell them you was nigh murdered yourself, covered with blood, your arm hanging down. It don't do no good, sir. What's all this nonsense about Roger's ghost? Well, that's no nonsense, sir. Every week it howls around the place at night, like an animal that's hurt. Most people says it's that and fear of the law that caused you to go away. They forget no domini was ever a coward. I seem to have broken that rule. It isn't being a coward to run off when you love someone and know the sight of you drives them to madness. How'd you know about that? I saw the hurt and suffering in your face that night her ladyship went into hysterics and ran at you with a knife. Sir Everett, I had no idea. Or maybe I spoke too freely, sir. Well, it's quite all right, Middleton. I have no secrets from Mr. Mangan. You know, she still feels the same. With Mother unthanked, feeding her on eight? Why shouldn't she? I dread seeing her. Sleep on it. You can't see her tonight in any event. Perhaps you'll feel better about it in the morning. I wonder. Hey. Mrs. Unthanks prepared your old room, sir. You better not sleep there. Why not? The devil walks that part of this house by night, sir. Good. He and I can talk over old times. It's no joke, sir. My daughter's got another room ready. Sir. Get along, Middleton. The devil takes a hind look. Seems to me, as my solicitor, you should be taking care of these matters. Entirely outside the legal province, sir. In a car. Where is Mr. Mangan's suite? Uh, the blue room, sir. Hmm. But surely you're not going in there, sir? I hate to disappoint anyone. Sleeping in there will put me in touch with things again. that if ever you spend a night under this room, I'd kill you.
I'm Parkins, your new valet, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope I haven't hurt you. Well, don't sit there like a puppet. Do you always get up like that, sir? Hardly. I'd like to know the abs of me, gentlemen, sir. Did the other servants get here? About two hours ago, sir. Myself, one groom, and three maids. We come down from London by train and over here by bus. A beastly ride, sir, just as Mr. Mangan ordered. Has Mr. Mangan left yet? About an hour ago, sir. From what I hear, this must be a rum old place, sir. The girls in the kitchen tell stories about ghosts and murders and whatnot. Sort of legend, as it were. You know, I suppose it goes with a house like this, but very amusing. Very. Uh, Mr. Seaman, the architect, and his assistant are downstairs, sir. Oh, good. Tell them to have some breakfast. They've been told, sir. Uh, lay out my writing thing. Uh, yes, sir. You all right, sir? Right as a top. Surely you heard it when it came out of the bog last night, sir? I did hear a few noises, but they weren't made by Roger's ghost. Don't be too sure, sir. I'm an old hand with ghosts, Middleton. Get the horses ready. We'll ride round the place. Yes, sir. Good morning, Seaman. Well, hello, Sir Everett. This is Dubell. How do you do? How do you do? I'd like to get him started on the North Tower immediately. What's the rush? Don't pay to waste time. We've decided that the tower is the best location. I'll find someone to show you the way. I know the house very well, sir. From the plants. Oh, well, very well. Excuse me. Have you heard the news from Serbia? What news? Archduke Ferdinand of Austria was assassinated there yesterday. Assassinated? Great grief. <coughs> this probably means war. We must get our radio installed and keep in touch with Sir Ivan. Seaman, we can't move so fast. We've got to. Scotland Yard's been snooping around my London office. This affair is more complicated than we ever dreamed. Strange things happened here last night. May I speak out? Of course, Mrs. Unthank. Keep your servants out of my part of the house. I think that can be arranged. Oh, I heard your ghost last night. How do you do it? It's your doing, not mine. How was Lady Dominie this morning? As well as can be, with you here. I wish to see her. She won't see you. She wants you to go away and not come back. Are those your words or hers? Hers. Why do you want to keep me away from my wife? Because you will finish what you started. Put her back where she was five years ago. Mm. Cut yourself, Squire? Hmm? Uh, yes, yeah, shaving. Is that all you wanted to talk to me about? You're a fool to stay here. You say you love her. That'll do, Mrs. Unthank. You may go. I will, with pleasure. You see, if I cannot make peace with Lady Dominie, I cannot even stay here. Don't be absurd. You must say, we need you. <laughs> that is easy to say. Lady Dominie is ill. She could die. Don't be an ass. We are in deep enough without that. Her death would turn the whole countryside against me. Horses are ready, sir. Yep. Yeah. You have your problems, I have mine. How you solve yours is your affair, but they must be solved. Failure would be very disastrous for you, Sir Everett. I realize that. I shall be back and forth between here and London. You'll tell your servants to give me the run of the house? Good. I see the milliard wall is down. That wall's been down for 20 years, sir. Oh, yes, I forgot. Have it repaired. Yes, sir. Like old times, having the squire take a real interest. You love the place, don't you, Middleton? I feel it belongs to me as much as it does to you, sir. If you'll excuse me saying so. Of course. Oh, uh, has, uh, has this place ever been explored? Why, there isn't a man in all Norfolk as would go into the Black Bog, sir. No matter what you paid him, he couldn't do it. It's naught but a quagmire, foul with poisonous things. Nothing lives there. Pigs, swamp birds, a few wild dogs. Wild dogs, eh? Don't belittle things, Squire. You heard it yourself last night. You know you did. Bosh. 
You sound like Dr. Harrison. Only he says the whole thing's in her ladyship's mind. I wish you'd tell him you heard it, sir. What good would that do? Might help him to get at her ladyship's trouble. There may be something in what you say. Tell the tenants about the repairs. I'm going to the village. Aye, sir. A nice one, Doctor. <laughs> Leave it to Dr. Harrison. The doctor never misses. <laughs> ah, another good one, Doctor. How are you, Doctor? Sir Everett, welcome. Why, you're looking better than when you went away. We heard you'd been dissipating, gone completely to pot. Oh, pure gossip. Can you spare a moment? Of course, of course. Excuse me. I thought he was in Africa. Bad pennies always come back. He's changed, I tell you. Passed by old Forsyth's place this morning and told him to have a new roof put on his barn. He told me to get some new tools and send the bill to him. I wonder what brought him back all of a sudden, eh? Dr. Harrison, I want to talk to you about Lady Dominic. Yes? Surely there must be some way I can help her. It means so much to me. Sir Everett, you know that I've studied her case for a long time. Mm. I'm finally convinced that the only hope for Lady Ellen has returned to normal life lies in your love. If that can be built, it may blot out these things that now dominate her mind. But is it safe? It's difficult to say. The mere sight of you may bring on an attack, a mental relapse. I realize that. That's why I came to you. On the other hand, if you're careful, kind and gentle, you may accomplish a great deal. For days she seems perfectly normal. Then she suddenly breaks out in a fit of hysterical hatred against you. At such times she seems almost hypnotic. If I could only talk to her alone, get Mrs. Unthank out of the way. Mm, I sometimes doubted the wisdom of keeping Mrs. Unthank on. But your wife depends upon her, clings to her. It seemed dangerous to bring the question up. But she's such a morbid influence. Of course, I could bring a nurse down from London. If Lady Dominic would consent to that, it might be wise. Of course, from a medical standpoint, if you could get her to come to you, instead of forcing yourself on her, you would have a better chance. I don't quite see mm. why, but... I'll find a way. <laughs> I heard you returned. I was a bit worried. But your manner reassures me. Good luck. Thank you. Why? The arm seems as good as ever. Hmm? Oh, oh, it doesn't bother me at all, no. No stiffness? No. Mm, I made a fine job when I set that fracture. Yeah. Come in sometime and let me examine it. Gladly. And as I said before, move cautiously with Lady Don. Don't worry. I will. Mm -hmm. You'll pardon me for saying so, sir, but I think the maid should be given a good talking to, sir. They've done no work today to stand about like duchesses, gossiping about the little legends of the air and the myths of the countryside. Superstitions of the lower class, I called it, and should not be encouraged, sir. They'll undoubtedly get over it. Right, sir. And how would you like your tea in the morning, sir? In silence. Yes, sir. I suppose it must be the narrowness of the country life that makes them believe all this rot, sir. With trees and bushes about, even the youth of the owl takes on its weird significance, sir. I've always worked in the city myself, sir. A true gentleman's gentleman. <coughs> what was that, sir? The superstitions of the low classes, I suspect. <laughs> yes, sir. I think I'd better go down and quiet the servants, sir. They'll probably be frightened to death, sir. Why do you want to kill me? His spirit cries and cries, telling me I must. What you think is his spirit is only the howling of the wind. No, no, it's Roger. We recognize his voice. Why did you kill him? I fought only to keep him from killing me. His blood all over you. I can see it. No, Eleanor. Come closer. Let me show you it isn't so. Look. There is 
isn't any. Of course not. You weren't lying to me. I've never lied to you, Eleanor. You can believe me. Trust me. I'm your husband. My husband? It's been so long since I heard that word. Why are you here? To help and protect you. But I don't need you. Mrs. Unthank does that. Suppose Mrs. Unthank went away. No. But she's worked very hard. She needs a rest, a vacation, a long one. She might like that. I'll get a nurse down from London. Oh, you can have Mrs. Nick around if you like, near you, in Middleton's cottage. I can see her whenever I want. Of course. You can do anything you like, Eleanor. Anything that makes you happy. You want me to be happy? Very happy. You're so kind. I thought I hated you. No, Eleanor. You don't hate me. No. I don't believe I do. Sometimes when I'm tired, I can't always remember. You're lovely, Anna. You will be like this all the time, won't you? Always, if you let me stay. I want you to stay. The length of time two people know each other has nothing to do with their falling in love. Hmm. Sleep time. I will, tonight. In a month's time, we'll have you as well and strong as ever. Do you really think so? Dr. Dominey never makes a mistake. Good night, darling. Give Seaman credit. He planned it. Such a clever man. Very. Happy. Terrible. <laughs> How are you, Seaman? Splendid, splendid. Lady Dominey, I've never seen you look better. Thank you. Well, Seaman, what news of the war? Half of Europe's hard at it. It's only a question of days before the entire continent will be one battlefield. No, no. This morning, the innocent bystander was invaded. But the little chap in between always gets crushed. England has guaranteed its neutrality. London is stunned, waiting for the moment. Will England go in? I think it's inevitable. Nonsense. We can't afford to be dragged into this. Does that mean you'll be starting for London tonight? I'm afraid I must. This is serious. It means a great deal. To all of us. Yes. Yes. <coughs> Who's this? Thank you, Mr. Seaman. Everett, I got you after all. 
Aren't you surprised? Very. I'm glad you found you could come. Well, this is my wife, Princess Idestrom. Eleanor? How do you do, Lady Dominique? You don't mind my dropping in on you? Well, of course not. Well, I talked to the princess in London. She was sure she couldn't get here. I should have wired, but it slipped my mind. You see, it is so interesting if I know someone to meet the person to whom they're married. I suppose it is. I'll see that a room is made ready. Thank you. My servants, please. The side entrance, thank you. Come. How dare you come here? This is impossible. But Leopold. Don't call me by that name. My dear, I couldn't stay away any longer, so I... Princess, if you persist in interfering... This matter is out of your hands, Mr. Seaman. I've been to see Sir Ivan Brun. He moves of my being here. Sir Ivan told you to come? Yes, as a casual friend of Sir Everett Domini. <laughs> Why not? I know all about your plans. I'll help you. I can talk to the women, bring you news you wouldn't get otherwise. Oh, I'll be careful. Discreet. And we can be near each other. We'll have a long talk later on, Princess. Everything's ready. Well, thank you. Oh, I almost forgot. I have some regards for you. I saw Dr. Trank in Calais. In Calais? Yes, he came in from Africa yesterday. Is he coming to London? He said not. We'd better hurry. Dinner's at seven. There's not much time to dress. This is dangerous. Yes, but you mustn't make an enemy of Princess Stefani. To be involved with one woman is bad enough. Two would be fatal. What do you mean? I understand you give every sign of being in love with Lady Dominic. Ha! Ah, you are well served here. I can't afford not to be. Don't worry. Nothing on earth will soften me or interfere with my job. You had better cable Sir Ivan. Tell him Stefani's presence here jeopardizes our plans. Right. Have you... Have you finished your work? Yes. Everything is perfect. You must see it. There will be time before dinner. Come along. This is an attic full of dust. Come and have a look. Carry on, Hugo. Beautiful job, eh? They. That carries the radio antenna through that trap door on the roof. Like this. No, no, sir. Not in the daytime. All right, Hugo. I know. from this. The country's helpless. But I do not understand. Every one of our operatives has a receiving set. The instant that we are sure that England will enter the war, we fix a time, this lifts its voice, and all the strategic military bases all over the nation are wiped out. But how? Our men have their instructions and the necessary explosives. Where are the men? In houses, offices, shops. Should I not have a list of them, in case something happens to you? I'll go over the details with you tomorrow. We'll clean out my London office and move everything here. Good. No, no. England will never go in. We can't. We're not prepared. Oh, I wouldn't say that exactly. We have the Navy, and there can be no question as to the efficiency of our army, although it may be comparatively small. Yes, and from the munitions orders on my desk, may soon be immeasurably larger. We've no right fighting Europe's battle. We can safely say that if England does go to war, it will be because of treaty obligations which we hold sacred and would never dream of renouncing. Bosh! The nation's duty is to itself. England's army should defend England. My dear sir, you're sufficiently forceful to defend England single-handed. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you would stand for Parliament, Everard, you will have an active vote in these matters. You could also propose a law to prevent men from falling offices. <laughs> <laughs> you both make me feel I have no alternative. You must. We need men like you in Parliament. It's your duty. Henry, be quiet. They can hear you in the stables. Amazing. <laughs> your wives wish to announce that if you've quite finished discussing Cora's scales, you may join them. Oh, <laughs> 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 Doing fine work, meeting just the right people. Of course, it's costing scabs of money, but it's worth it. A poor man couldn't do this. Did you talk to Sir Gerald? This morning. I have a synopsis for you. Lord Allison? Every one of his plans is running at capacity. Splendid, splendid. 
We've been telling your husband he must stand for Parliament. Uh, you'll encourage him, won't you? I will. Thank you. When can I see you alone? Later. You're looking better, my dear. Getting stronger every day. Thanks to you, Doctor. Oh. And you. Yeah, rather, I'm ugly care. Oh, pleasure. Quantrell? Thanks. You're a marked man. By whom? Princess. I know that look. I've had it in my eye. Men seldom escape. Watch me. Optimist? Well, remember, if you must play it, I get first choice. Always. A gentleman will see you, Sir Ebron. Mr. Wolf. Wolf? Yes, sir. Said his business was important. Asked to see Mr. Seaman, too, sir. I've shown him into the den. Oh, very well. Will you excuse me? Be delighted. Come along. Hi, Wolf. Mr. Seaman. You know who Sir Everett Dominey is? I know. How do you do? The neutral countries have applied to England for aid. So, England can't refuse. I don't know. She may. Sir Evan cabled me to get the map showing the points to be attacked here. I am to take it to him. <laughs> Sir Ivan wastes no time. I only completed it this afternoon. A very disquieting rumor has reached us from our representative in Africa, Sir Everett. A native chief insists that the Englishman is not dead. He may show up here any time. Not dead? Didn't you make sure? He came to my camp raving drunk, deserted by all but one boy. To finish him was simple. It may be just a rumor. Sir Evan thought you should know. Uh, surely you will spend the night. I mustn't lose time. Will you call a taxi? Oh, Mr. Pelham is going to the station. I will have him drive you down. I'll tell him. Right. Johnson? Yes, sir. Will you ask Mr. Pelham to drive Mr. Wolf to the station, please? Right, sir. Yeah. Johnson will take you to your car, Mr. Wolf. Thank you. Good night. Good night. That rumor, it worries me. Pure nonsense. Sir Ivan's a shrewd man. Perhaps he merely wanted Wolf to see how we would react to the story. Well, if that is true, he has his answer. Our consciences are clear. Is it not dangerous for Wolf to be carrying that map around England? It means nothing to anyone who doesn't understand our plan. I alone know the names of our men. Good. You know, one would almost think you belong here. I do my duties as well as I can. Would your duty permit a walk on the terrace? I'm afraid not. How can you be so callous? Dr. Harrison insists I go to bed. I'm not a bit tired. You've made fine progress, but it's easy to overdo. She mustn't have too much excitement. Dr. Dominique concurs. I can see I'm outnumbered, if you'll all excuse me. <laughs> Where's Johnson? He should have removed the tray. Uh, oh, uh, I'll attend to it uh, as soon as I take you to your room. Good night. Good night. Good night, my dear. Please, Good night. Good night and dream. Good night. Good night. <laughs> A week ago, you had to carry me. Aren't you glad I'm better? Not only for that reason. You're so kind. You do care for me, don't you? More than anything on that. I know I shouldn't, but that's the way I care for you. Why shouldn't you? Because I know you're not my husband. Oh, dear, that's so foolish. Oh, I've suspected it for a long time. Today, I just seem to know. But, Helena, darling, I am your husband. Please believe me. But I can't. He was so reckless, wild, and heedless. You're so thoughtful and considerate. Why, even the way you hold me feels different. It's nothing, darling. It's nothing. Look at me. 
don't you know? Oh, I want you near me. I wouldn't even care if ever I did come back. I don't want him, I want you, even if you are another man. Roger. Roger. It's nothing of the sort. Don't let the hypnotism of this horrid woman upset you. No. Please go. But darling. He doesn't want you here. Darling, darling, I'm trying to help you. No. Can't you hear him? You can't stay. Lady Please go. Me. Please. He must go. You better go, say it. He must go. He must go. What do you mean by calling me? Leopold, are you falling in love with Lady Domini? Don't be ridiculous. I'm not being ridiculous. She's lovely. Anyone can see that she adores you. But you wouldn't dare. Of course I wouldn't. Well, something has changed you. Oh. What is it? Why do you constantly evade me? I have told you why. Six years ago, you would have thrown anything aside. Country, duty. Sometimes I think you're not Leopold at all. Believe that for a little while, please. What if it were true? There are times I don't recognize you. You play the part of every Domini so well. But... Oh, Leopold, don't keep putting me off. I need you. You're funny. This is mad. You cannot stay here. The other guests are leaving in the morning. You must go with them. If anyone should find us here, this would be the end. Operator, get me the Lafayette Hotel in Calais, quick. Hello? Yes? Yes, Princess. Well, you want me to identify him? All right. I leave for London immediately. Goodbye. I'm telling you, it's bad luck to fool with spirits, sir. Did you hear anything last night? Yes, sir. Heard him calling. Very faint. Look. Spirits don't leave tracks. Now, see here, I want you to hire some men. Dig a ditch through that low ridge there. But quiet. I won't they... have to go into the bog. The ditch will drain off the water. Get 50 drums of kerosene. Run it through this end of the bog and then surround it. When I give the word, we'll fire it. I'll have to pay double wages, sir. Pay triple if necessary. Get busy. Aye, sir. Ready to leave? Yes, ready, sir. You must announce your candidacy for Parliament at once. Then there can be no question of your loyalty. The Ivan has to be kept informed of the latest feeling here, of new military developments. Seaman talking. You sure? Right. Wolf's been arrested this morning. No. Taken to the Tower of London. The report hasn't been confirmed yet, but we can't be too careful. Even your own subordinate shouldn't be trusted further than absolutely necessary. I see. But these men are private spies. You may find them useful. They'll do anything for money. These cover the designs of the latest U-boats. We may be able to trade them for some information here. You would betray your own country? We owe allegiance to no nation. You know that. Well, that's the lot, I think. You'd better get down to Domini Hall. I'll finish up here and be along shortly. How about the list of our operatives here? Later. For the present, they must stay here. Squire's well, return, Doctor. 
carried out your orders, Squire. The bond's ready to burn. Touch a match to it. I'll be there shortly. Yes. I'll go on. Quiet now, but still upset. Mrs. Anthank is here and insists upon seeing you. Oh, hello, Eddie. How did you get here? Early this afternoon. Lock this in the desk in my study, will you? Pleasure. You plan to burn the black bog? I do. If you go on, you will not live through this night. I'll take that chance. Everett Dominey never spoke like that. Who are you? yourself together. This will soon put you to rights. <laughs> down with a single blow. You saved her? I saved my son. I'd rather have him dead than have you get him. Oh, I know it was wrong keeping him out there, taking him food, upsetting her. But he was happier that way, happier than he would have been locked up with a lot of crazy people. He was my son. I loved him. We're in bed, Doctor. Good. After a shock like this, if she pulls through, she may be perfectly normal, or her case may be hopeless. We'll know before long. I hope you better not be here. I understand, Doctor. I'm convinced he's not Leopold. He must be Sir Everett. I saw them together only one night. But I might be able to tell. Dr. Crange, you must identify him. I'll do my best. I have a cable from Sir Ivan. I must leave for the continent at once. You will be in full charge here. England will declare war tonight. How do you know? My information is correct. It's now 8.30. At 9. We send our signal and carry out our plan. You know the code word? Strike. With you gone, I must know who our men are. Right. At Woolwich, John Craig, Allen Street. At Rosyth, J. Williams, 
Tower Road. Oh, excuse me, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, that's all right, Eddie. What is it? Well, I'm just leaving for London. I thought I'd pop in and say goodbye. Are you taking the roadster? Yeah. Well, good luck. See you later. Stupid young ass. I don't know why you have him around oh, here. He is good company. There. Good. Who is he? He's the Englishman. He's not Baron Leopold. What? What did you do with Leopold? Baron von Ragenstein is dead. Oh. When you discussed your plan with von Ragenstein to do away with me, you should have chosen a house with thicker walls. Oh, you overheard, eh? Yes. <laughs> London headquarters, quick. You've got the match from Wolf Wright. Get on your feet in a hurry. The war office needs you. With a nurse like this, it should be a matter of minutes. You come the guards, sir. Well, I must be going. Goodbye. Goodbye, Sir General. Goodbye, Lady Dominic. Goodbye. You've done a great thing for England. England has done a great thing for me.